Hello, my name is Chris Sims. Today we are going to build a graph database for modeling a social network using Microsoft's Azure Cosmos DB and Apache's Gremlin. Graph databases are powerful tools that can help you quickly explore complex relational data and fully understand how your data is connected together. When we are done, you will be able to fully explain what a graph database is and will have a basic understanding of the Cosmos DB graph API built on Gremlin. To begin, we will learn what a graph database is. We will explore some common scenarios in which you would use a graph database. Then we'll look at the anatomy of a Cosmos DB graph database. And finally, we'll put it all together and build and query a graph database using Cosmos DB and Gremlin. Let's get started. What exactly is a graph database? The definition we will use for a graph database is a system that models data using nodes, edges, and properties to efficiently model the relationship between objects. Graph databases are derived from graph theory and are extremely effective tools in modeling data in which you care as much about how the information is connected as you do about the properties of that data. Common uses for a graph database include social networks such as Facebook and Twitter, recommendation engines for e-commerce sites, geospatial analysis and route building, fraud and anomaly detection, logistics, basically anything in which you'd want to build an understanding of how pieces of data are related to each other. So let's drill down a bit more and build out a specific example of a graph database and talk about how we would model this database inside of Cosmos DB. Cosmos DB uses Apache's Tinkerpop, a graph computing framework for graph databases, and Gremlin, Tinkerpop's graph traversal language, to provide its graph database API. Specifically, Tinkerpop supports the creation of property graphs. To explore the concept of property graphs, we are going to build a social network database that models students, their majors, schools, friendships, and favorite sports. A property graph consists of vertices or nodes. These are individual units of data that you might want to track. In our example, they might include universities, majors, students, and sports. Each vertex is given a type and an ID and is used to track relationships. These relationships are called edges. Edges define how the vertices are connected. For instance, we might care about a student's school and major, who their friends are, and what sports they enjoy. As you can see, with just a small amount of data in our system, tracking relationships can be very complex. However, with the graph database, we can easily store and query these relationships. Finally, we define the specific characteristics of both edges and vertices using properties. A person vertex might contain information about their name, age, and city, and the nose relationship between students might have a date that tracks when these students met. When we model our data in this way, we can quickly begin to answer questions such as what friends of Donald enjoy playing football and attend Vanderbilt, or what computer science majors play basketball. Now that we've covered the basics of what a graph database is and how Cosmos DB enables the creation of a graph database, let's put these concepts into action and build our social network. In this demo, we'll use Gremlin Console to create our social network. We will learn how to view our data from our network. We'll perform a simple query. And finally, we'll build a more complex tree traversing query using Gremlin. For this demo, we will be using Gremlin Console. You can download Gremlin Console from Apache. And to learn how to configure the console to connect to Cosmos DB, you can use the Cosmos DB Gremlin Console Quick Start documentation available at this bit.ly link. We've logged into our Cosmos Graph DB using Gremlin Console, and we're now going to create a new vertex. To create a new vertex, we'll use the add vertex command, and we'll tell Gremlin we want to create a new student vertex. Next, we will build out the properties we want to add to our vertex. Gremlin is a fluent language that allows you to string together methods to build your ultimate output. So to create a vertex with multiple properties, we string together multiple property commands to our add vertex command. For the sake of time, I've entered all the vertices we described in our social network. And let's take a look at how we can view that data. We're going to ask Gremlin to return all of the first name properties from our database and we'll get back a list of people in our database. We can do the same thing with name and get back a list of sports, majors, and universities. 
Now that we have our vertices, we need to add the edges that connect our vertices. To do that, we will use Gremlin's Add Edge command. First, we select the vertex we want to add an edge to. In this case, we're selecting Donald. Next, we use Add Edge to tell Gremlin what label we'd like to use for our edge. In this case, we're setting up a connection between Donald and a friend, so we will choose Nose. Finally, we tell Gremlin which vertex we would like to connect to by using a vertex ID, and when we do this, we will complete the link. When we execute the command, Gremlin creates our edge and connects the two vertices. For the sake of time, I'm going to add the remaining vertices to our graph. We are now ready to read and query our data using Gremlin's graph traversal features. Next, we are going to perform a basic filter that will return certain vertices based on properties on that vertex. One of Gremlin's most common filtering methods is the has method. It has a couple of variants, and in this case, we are telling Gremlin that we want to return anything that has the label student. Once we select all of the student vertices, we're going to add another filter that returns only students that have an age greater than 30. And finally, we're going to use those values and return only the first name of these students. We can rerun the command and change the greater than to less than LT and return all of the students that are less than 30 years of age. Filtering is an important part of Gremlin, but one of the most important functions, in fact, one of the main reasons you would use a graph database, is its ability to traverse a graph and return information. For instance, you might want to return all of the computer science majors. Gremlin allows you to do all of that very easily. Let's perform the first traversal we just described and return a list of computer science majors. We begin by selecting the computer science vertex and then ask Gremlin to return all of the incoming edges and then follow those edges and return the outgoing vertex and finally return the first name of those vertices. Gremlin will start at the computer science vertex and follow all the possible paths through the graph to return the requested vertices. Finally, we are going to perform a more complex graph traversal and ask Gremlin to return a list of all of the students that are friends with Donald, that play football, and attend Vanderbilt. This should return a single name, John. To perform this traversal, we are going to use the WHERE step. The WHERE step selects vertices that have a traversal that matches the value you are looking for. In this case, we want to return all of the vertices that have a nose edge that has a vertex named Donald. Or, said easier, everyone that knows Donald. We can also add everyone that plays football and everyone that attends Vanderbilt. Again, because Gremlin is fluent, this returns all the vertices that match the combination of these clauses. Finally, we look at the, just the first name of each of these values and we return the single name, John. Today, we learned that graph databases help you model data in a way that helps you understand how information is connected together. We looked at Cosmos DB's implementation of a graph database using Apache Tinkerpop and Gremlin. And using that knowledge, we built a simple social network and explored some basic Gremlin functionality to work with that network. If you'd like to continue your Cosmos DB and Gremlin learning, check out the tinkerpop.apache.org forward slash docs website to learn more. Thank you.